Alright, this video is going to go over four common types of market failure. Uh, just to introduce what market failure is, let's first look at perfectly competitive markets. We assume that supply and demand interact in such a way that we get a market quantity and a market price. And this equilibrium makes consumer surplus plus producer surplus as large as it can possibly be. So total surplus is maximized, the economy is happy, if we make any change it's going to make the total economy worse off or lower total surplus. This is the idea behind Adam Smith's invisible hand. We let the market determine allocations, everybody's as well off as they can possibly be. However, there's this idea of an invisible foot that can come along and kick you in the butt and disturb this beautiful market outcome. The first are externalities, the second are public goods, third common resources, fourth imperfect information. Now there are some other types of market failure but we're not going to get into those today. These are the four most common types. So first externalities. Externality means that there's a third party who's affected by a transaction that isn't involved in the transaction. So let's suppose that there's a factory that pollutes. When they pollute, they cause harm to somebody else. That person isn't involved in the transaction. So there's an additional social cost that's not being included in their supply curve. So the true equilibrium should occur here at a lower quantity and a higher price, but the market equilibrium occurs here, and if we went through some shenanigans, we would end up finding that a deadweight loss is created, allowing a market to allocate resources in the presence of an externality. So externalities can cause a market failure. Second are public goods. So if it's not a private good, it's a public good, we're going to see problems. Public goods have the characteristic that they're non-rival and non-excludable. So when a good is non-rival, that means that if one person consumes it, another person can consume it. So imagine a radio station. If you listen to a radio station, somebody else can listen to the same radio station, no problem. But if you eat an apple, nobody else can eat that apple. So an apple is rival, a radio station is non-rival. Now the important one, non-excludable. A public good can't be excluded from people. So let's go back to our apple example. A store can exclude people from consuming the apple by charging them or sicking the police on them if they try to steal it. So an apple is excludable. But a radio station, once you buy a radio, is non-excludable. Everybody can use it. So if a good is both non-rival and non-excludable, anybody can use it, there's no incentive to pay. And when there's no incentive to pay, we see this price drop down to zero, and if the price is zero, no firms are going to supply that product. Next, we have common resources. Common resources are similar to public goods in that they're non-excludable, but they are rival. So imagine a road that doesn't have any exclusions. People can drive on it. Maybe so many people drive on it that it becomes degraded. They've used up that road, or it becomes congested. They've used up the road. Now you can't use it. That's an example of being rival. The most common example is if you have a shared pasture that you can graze cattle on. This is a Hardin's tragedy of the commons example. Everybody wants to put their cattle on the pasture because it's non-excludable. You can't keep them from using it, but it is rival. The more people who use it, the more degraded the pasture comes. Because everybody knows that it will be degraded, everybody uses it as quickly as possible. So a common resource problem has the same issue with price. It's non-excludable. We see the supply drop to zero. Even though there's positive demand for those products, suppliers won't supply any because there's no price. Finally, we have imperfect information. 
So this one's a little bit trickier, but if you imagine our original supply and demand framework, we assume that perfect information is attained by both consumers and producers. So this is what the graph should look like. But let's say that suppliers know that their product is really bad and demanders don't know that. Their true demand for the inferior product would be a lot lower. But because they don't know that it's bad, they have imperfect information, they keep their original demand curve which is higher. So true equilibrium should be here. However, with imperfect information, we see the equilibrium here and again we get our dead weight loss. The other major type of market failure that some people go back and forth on are different types of market structure. But that is a huge discussion in and of itself that we can go over in a future video.